Hello, boys and girls, and welcome to this edition of The Tin List on the Animal Mind Podcast. This is actually the first edition of The Tin List, so allow me to introduce it real quickly. So Zach and I were sitting around trying to come up with uh, new ideas for different segments or possibly different shows, and we said, well, what if we broke it down and, and really got crunched down to, to the bare bones of the message that we're trying to get across to people and just made like 10 really solid bullet points. Um, so we came up with this idea for the 10 list, and we encourage our guests when they come on to come up with some kind of list of 10 items or things that they would like to get across to you guys. And so our first edition of the 10 list, we have Adam Velastro, and he's going to talk to you about overcoming adversity, the top 10 ways to overcome adversity. So we really enjoyed putting this part of the program together with Adam. Um, if you haven't heard of Adam, you need to go back to episode three of the Animal Mind podcast. Essentially, Adam is trying to break the speed record for climbing the 46 peaks of the Adirondack Mountains, and the reason he's doing this is to raise awareness for Lyme disease. He's a really cool dude, very motivational, very driven, and uh, definitely recommend this podcast. A lot of really good sound bites uh, to be found in here. Very motivating, very inspirational. Um, while I'm here, I need to tell you, you need to go to our Facebook. You need to follow the Facebook. You need to go and follow the Instagram. You need to go follow the Twitter so that you know everything Animal Mind podcast related that's coming out, that's coming about. Um, and it just helps show some love. Also, go to the AnimalMindPodcast.com click on shop and we have all kinds of t-shirts and mugs and uh, really cool things featuring Animal Mind podcast designs. But without further ado, let's get this tin list started. These, this is more or less the, the top 10 most important things that I believe have, have really worked for me and allowed me to kind of get to the point that I'm at and to even consider doing the things that I'm doing. Um, and this isn't necessarily ranked in any fashion um, from most important to least or anything, but um, I'm going to start off with what I believe is the most important um, aspect of anything that anybody could ever do. And in my opinion, that's self-awareness. Um, I really think it's super important that people need to understand first and foremost um, who they are at any given point in time. If you're, you know, if you have strengths in this area and you're weak in this area or whatever it is, I just truly believe that you've got to be self-aware. You have to know who you are. You can't, you know, if you find yourself reaching for, you know, um, uh, if you're, if you're looking for people to tell you that you're doing a good job, you know, if you're relying on that type of thing, if you have insecurities or any of these other things, um, then you need to figure out and just become your own person. You need to really just sit down, ask yourself the hard questions and, and truly be absolutely honest with yourself. Don't sugarcoat anything. Just figure out who you are. And the minute that you do that, you, you eliminate anything that could potentially handicap you in the continuing pursuit of happiness of, of whatever it is that you want to do in life. Um, if you have that self-awareness, then nothing can touch you. You know, no one, there's nobody out there that can say you're, you can't do this, or there's no one out there that can, can, you know, make you not want to do something or not believe you can do something strictly because of their opinion N and nothing that life throws at you is going to be able to, to slow you down if you are confident in who you are as a person. And so that that's my absolute first thing. Yeah, part of that is in who you surround yourself with. Like you don't want to surround yourself with people who are just going to cheerlead you all day long. You want people to tell you what's up. Like when you make a mistake um, that that can uh, make you a better person. So like don't don't hang around with yes men all the time. And and uh, I think that's a big part of that. And uh, and Zach, you are you, you go to school for self awareness, aren't you? Aren't you majoring in that? Uh, no, I mean, well, one of the courses I'm in right now is actually self-awareness. Uh, 
be majoring in uh, cultural studies, stuttering, uh, stuttering, yes, yeah, stuttering, <laughs> uh, studying uh, written religion, Eastern religion, and Native American religion. And uh, wow. and the thing that I've I've learned the most through the study of self awareness is that uh, more often than not, people tend to think in emotion. Mm-hmm. So if they uh, they start to feel sad or angry or melancholic. They start to to analyze the emotion and and all the ways that they feel, um, and uh, it it tends to turn into a toxic result. And more often than not, people lack the emotional maturity to realize that they're thinking a thought unsupervised, and then they need to to back off of it and and relax a bit and take the time to realize, okay, I'm, I'm feeling an emotion. Why am I feeling it? What can I do to move forward and, and turn this from an obstacle into a tool? This is how Zach talks me off cliffs all week long. It's gotta be exhausting (laughs) to be on the other side of the phone when I'm texting him. Yeah. I, like I said before, man, I'm not a philosopher. I just play one on a podcast. (laughs) All right, man. What's number two? So number two, um, I just believe in the value of hard work, um, work ethic, just no matter what it is you're doing, just work harder. Honestly, um, one of my favorite, uh, people that I've honestly follow, uh, Cameron Haynes, one of his, you know, um, very common statements is just nobody cares, work harder. Yeah, and, I love that. uh, it's true. It's true. I mean, um, no matter if you if you were to imagine, no matter who you are, right? If you're the if you're the cashier at McDonald's, if you're a janitor at a high school or whatever, um, if you're the if you go into any position in life and you give it one hundred percent, regardless of whether you like it or not, if you were to go in and give one hundred percent, not seventy five percent, not eighty percent, one hundred percent, you eventually are going to be rewarded. You are eventually going to to see much bigger and much greater things. I think a lot of people just get stuck in what they're doing because it's something they feel that they have to do. And they put in, you know, sometimes 50%, sometimes less than that. Mm -hmm. Um, and I think if you, if you just put a hundred percent into anything and just do the work and work hard, um, that, that will go a really long way that I just truly believe that. And, and I I just want to point out that your favorite people are our favorite people too. So we're all here oh, in the same cloud. <laughs> Perfect. Like, like, uh, like, uh, uh, Zach's, w- would you say your man crush is Cam Haynes and my man oh, crush yeah, no, is I, David I wake Goggins? up in the morning and, and he's who I want to be when I grow up. Yeah. <laughs> yep, yep. He's, uh, he's the man. He's the man. Um, number three. Number three is persistence. Um, consistency and persistence, I think. Uh, is just equally as important. I mean, no matter who you are, if you're, if you're battling people, if you're battling life, nothing, nothing likes to go against something that just never stops. You know what I mean? Like no matter what situation, no matter what it is, if you're always constantly, you get knocked down, you get back up, you keep going, you get knocked down, you get back up, you keep going, no matter what happens, no matter what the situation is, you just are consistent, you're persistent. Those will carry you, um, through those times when, you know, failure and adversity are in your face. Um, just making sure that you continue to be persistent. I think, uh, nothing can stop Nothing can stop someone who chooses to do something. And if you make that, that choice every day, um, eventually you're going to be rewarded for all that hard work. Absolutely. Right. And I, and I, I like to think of it, I don't, somebody in my life, I can't, I can't remember who used to tell, say this all the time, but now I've picked it up. Um, whenever you have a big goal or a big thing that you're trying to achieve, they always say it's a wood chipper. That's a wood chipper. That means yeah. that you're going to chip away at it, chip away at it. Don't let it be so immense that you can't tackle it all. You just got to every single day go in there and chip at it. Or, or like they say, you know, like how, um, uh, an artist, uh, does a marble sculpture. Um, the, the tools are not, um, jackhammers. Right. <laughs> They're exactly. very, very fine finesse, uh, delicate tools that to, to, uh, to make the, uh, the item that they want. Okay. Awesome. So number four. Number four is, uh, to be mentally tough. 
um, no matter, you know, how you are physically in shape or anything like that, that's not really important. Um, what matters is, is how you are able to work your mind. And, you know, for, for guys, um, you know, for most people, honestly, thinking logically seems to be very difficult, especially nowadays in today's society. Um, everybody just seems to be crazy. Everything just, it's, it's almost like, uh, the world is just falling into a pit of insanity and, uh, it's, it's almost easy right now to, to be great just because everyone is so weak. And a lot of that just has to do with mental weakness and you see it everywhere. A everyone wants to be a victim or they might not want to be a victim, but they think that they're victims. And, um, the only person, the only victim who's a victim is someone who allows themselves to be a victim victim um because you can use any situation uh to empower yourself and to uh overcome to adapt and to move on and uh i just honestly believe that mental toughness and fortitude is vital it's vital if you want to do anything good good with your life you're not going to if you find yourself at the end of excuses or if you find yourself as a victim in any situation you know you hear from these you, you always meet these certain people in life who are they're always like man i don't know why this stuff always keeps happening to me or you know my life sucks like th this happens and that happens and blah 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 and that is just toxic shit like no one number one no one wants to hear that no one wants to be around that but number two you're not accomplishing anything by carrying that mentality, you've got to be tough. You got to be able to take the punches and you got to be able to get up. And, uh, there's a great line in one of the Rocky movies where he's just like, it's not, it's not how hard you can, it's not how hard you hit. It's how hard you can get hit and keep moving forward. Mm -hmm. And, uh, I think that sums it up. Perfect. Yeah. And, and the funny thing about those people is it's not good enough for them to be miserable. They got to make you miserable too. And definitely, oh, yeah. definitely when I first started working out and I've gone through phases in my life where I've worked out and then kind of, you know, trailed off and stopped. And what I started thinking about it was why did I, why did I keep stopping? Why didn't I keep hammering like uh, campaign says, or that have that persistence? Um, and, uh, very often it was because I had somebody from the outside telling me I was doing it wrong. And it just seemed like no matter what I would do, somebody would come in and be like, you're not doing it right. You're doing it wrong. And then you get so confused. You're just like, well, I don't know what, what I'm supposed to do if I'm not, you know, sh should I do CrossFit? Should I do, uh, should I, sh should I do marathon running? Should I do powerlifting? Should I do bodybuilding? So everybody seems to tell me I have it wrong. So I guess what? I just won't do anything. And one of the things that I, I've realized is that the people who are always telling you to, that you're doing it wrong are out of shape. <laughs> yeah, there's um there's a really good point that was brought up in another podcast I was listening to, and uh, basically the guy who the guy was like, and it was like blew me away. I was like, wow, I never thought about it like that. And he basically just said, you know, you never see a hater. A, a hater is never somebody who's doing better than the person that they're hating on. You never see someone who's who's better than you hating on you. It's all always people who are either either at your level or below. Yeah. And um, there's a reason for that. There's cut a reason out. for that. I agree 100%. <laughs> that's, that's number 11. Cut them out. <laughs> <laughs> cut them out. <laughs> I got a number 12 too, but I'll throw it in there at the end. I'll let you finish. Where are we at? Number five? Sounds good. Number five. Number five is self-discipline. Um, I can't say this enough. Motivation is shit. Motivation is garbage. It's fickle. It comes, it goes. And, uh, it's the reason why 80% of people fail their new year's resolution by the second week. And, uh, that's because they're motivated. The new year comes around. All right, I'm going to make some changes. The, just the idea of that, right? A lot of people, sometimes you'll find them in a situation and they'll, they'll make a list because just the act of making that list, they're motivated to do it, makes them feel better. It feels like they're accomplishing something towards their goal. And, um, that's motivation, right? That's, that's motivation. But then you wake up when three days later or you get into the gym and you start working out for two weeks. And in that first two weeks, it starts to hurt and you realize, man, this sucks. And you lose that motivation and then you're just done. You're not going to get anywhere relying on motivation. So self-discipline is super important, not discipline from other people, not discipline that not forced to discipline, but self-discipline where you say to yourself, I'm going to do this. I'm going to do this. I'm going to do this. And then you just do it day in day out and you just do it and do it and do it and you just don't stop um that is 
what's basically that's going to carry you when that motivation runs out, which is going to happen. I don't care what, why you're doing what you're doing. Eventually your motivation is going to run dry on certain days or for months or for years or whatever. The only way you're going to get through that and to be able to be persistent is, um, to be disciplined. And, you know, I was never, I always told myself, I'm not a morning person. There's no way I'm going to be able be able to get up at 4am and go running out in negative eight degree weather and do all this other stuff. That's uncomfortable as hell. Um, until I disciplined it and you do that long enough and it becomes a habit and then it becomes easy and then it becomes something that you don't even think about. And, um, I just, I think self-discipline is just so important for anybody who wants to accomplish anything. Absolutely. How, how do, how does the unmotivated person develop self-discipline? Like could motivation be a stepping stone to the discipline? And then, the, then you, you see what I'm saying? Like yeah, motivation no, okay. is kind of like kindling and discipline is kind of like a large log that burns for a long time. How does somebody make that jump? <laughs> I think Dude, that's that, an easy, an easy one to answer, Pat. It's that most people don't understand that a human being is, is constantly evolving and changing. They're both the the sculptor and the stone. And unfortunately people don't want to lean into what is difficult, painful, or fearful. And they don't enjoy the suffering that comes along with changing yourself. And oh, those of so us right. that can embrace that suffering will go this self-discipline thing. Hold on a minute. There's something to this and I need to keep doing this because I'm getting results. I'm feeling better and I'm being better. But more often than not, that people look for that one, you know, Oh my gosh, there's a crack in the sidewalk. Oh, can't go, can't go for a run. Oh, there's a cloud in the sky. It's raining. They look for their one, you know, loophole as opposed to finding a reason to lean into that fear and pain. Mm. Right. Right on. Yep. Very good. Very good. Okay. What's next? All right. So, um, I think it's really important for people to have a purpose and, you know, this is, this is probably the most difficult one on the list. I think, um, a lot of people, some people go through their entire lives and they just never really figure it out. They just don't ever come to the conclusion, you know, this is really what I want to do. There's actually a really good quote out there. I don't know who it's from, but they say, um, there's two defining moments in any man's life, the moment that he's born and then the moment that he finds out why. And, um, I think, that's because if you get, if you, if you get to that point where you, you're like, this is it, this is why I'm here. This is, this is my purpose. This is what I want to do. This is how I want to do it. When you have that, when you have that defining, um, goal, more or less, or, or objective in life, it changes everything. And, um, I think that that's really important and there's a lot of people who are lost and they just don't know what it is that they want to do or, or what their purpose is. And honestly, I don't have good advice on, on to tell people how to find their purpose. I don't even know if it's something that you can actively search for, or if it's something that you have to wait for. Um, for me, I've, I've been searching my whole life for a purpose and eventually, you know, it's, it came from somewhere I never saw out of left field and it just kind of fell in my lap and, and here we are. Um, but once I found that, it was literally one of the most euphoric, best days of my life. I, I was just like, this, this is honestly, this is it, man. And uh, I, I'm telling you, there, there's a lot of power in purpose. There's a lot of power in that. There's power in purpose. I love it. I love it. What's next? What's next? All right. So um, you just don't make excuses. <laughs> you know, just... Um, excuses are Quit whining, <laughs> right? E excuses are, are just reprioritizing as far as I'm concerned. Um, you meet a lot of people and let's say there's someone you enjoy spending time with. You're like, Hey, you know, I wanted to, uh, maybe hang out this weekend and they'll just, I'm sorry, man, I've just been really busy. No, you just haven't been a priority. If I told you to come meet me in, uh, two days and I'll give you $6 million at 4am. Are you going to be there? Yeah. Hell you're going to yeah. be there and there's nothing that's going to stop you. You're going to be there to get that $6 million. Well, that just proves a point that there is nothing except excuses. It's everything is an excuse. It, there's people out there who are, who are uh, quadriplegics who are, you know, they're engaging in, in Olympics. They're, they're actual athletes. These guys are out there pushing themselves and they don't even have, half, they would kill just to have what you have on a daily basis. You know, it's all about perspective. Um, I 
really truly believe excuses are garbage. Um, if you find yourself telling them you're, if you find yourself giving excuses, then you're you're weak in that area. And that's as simple as it is. Yeah, and I think the most common way that people uh, give excuses are just giving excuses to themselves. They don't even have to give them oh, to right anybody on. else. You know, it's right. like when you're laying on the couch, like like Zach was saying, hey, well, I know I should be out there working out, but, you know, I'm, I really should relax, too. I, you got to have a recovery day, right? So I worked out right two on. weeks yeah. ago. I need 13 recovery days, and uh, maybe I'll get working yeah. out again. Yep, that's 100% what it is. <laughs> <laughs> Love it. All right, what's next? Uh this the next one is uh it's not the most important one on the list but it's by far my favorite it's the one lesson that my grandfather taught me um or basically pounded in my head anyway and and that's just to never to let anybody tire. tell you <laughs> yes how to make a bike tire on a garden hose <laughs> sorry uh good one um no he uh, he basically showed me that uh, to, to never let anybody tell you that you can't do something, never let anybody tell you no. Mm-hmm. And, um, you know, it's funny because you never meet people like that ever. And when you do, you always remember them. You always remember these people because it's just refreshing. And, um, a lot of people just get conditioned in life. They get used to like what a societal norm is or, or what's normal in their community or, or the people that they hang out with or whatever. Um, and anything outside of that norm, some people will just straight up be like, oh, that can't be done, you know, but there is a breed of human being out there who, who just doesn't seem and see impossible as, as something that exists. And, um, when you meet those people, they're truly fascinating. And I've always been fascinated by my grandfather and it's, it's more or less what's allowed me to get to the point that I'm at in my life is just, you know, he had a hundred stories, you know, he was, um, he's in the football hall of fame. Here's a good example. He's in the football hall of fame. When he was playing football, he was five foot, five inches tall, short, <clears throat> had nothing going for him for football. I mean, just not the person you'd expect to see out starting the game. And he didn't, um, for the first, you know, for the first few seasons, he was benched. And then, um, the only thing he really had was speed. And so he was a, a, a temporary fill in running back. And then, uh, <laughs> one day the, the guy that they usually have starting got injured. And so they sent him in and then on his very first play. He ran a um, uh, hundred yard touchdown, and from that moment on, he started every game. He was ranked MVP for multiple seasons, and he actually um, got to the point where they actually had like nicknames for him, and all the he would be in the news and in the papers and stuff. They called him Fleetfoot Joe because he was so fast, and um, that's why it reminds me so much of Forrest Gump. But he, um, you know. It, 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 had he listened to everybody that told him he would never be able to play football or that he couldn't do this or that he couldn't do that. I saw this man at 74 years of age, get in the face of a guy that was at least six foot four, 250 pounds. And I remember just sitting there being like, I would never do that. Like I would be scared to death to get in, in the face of someone that big, but that's just who he was. It didn't matter who you were in. You know what? He's, he actually came back to me that day and he's like, I told him, I said, I, I would be scared to death to do that. And he's like, you know, he goes, and that's what those people expect. He's like, they expect you to be mm-hmm. scared because that's what they're used to. And he's like, when you get someone like me and, and I get in their face, it's a level of crazy that they haven't seen before. <laughs> and it actually it's scares awesome. the shit out of them. The- and I was just like, you know, he's right. Like people, when you, when you are like that, people don't expect it. And it just really helps. It helps get you uh, pretty far in life. Just, just don't ever let anything or anyone tell you that you can't do something. If, if you believe you can do it, then, then go out and do it. That's awesome. That brings me back to uh, episode two, Zach, when we were talking about how uh, grumpy old men live longer. Oh, yeah. So we aspire to be grumpy old men. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. <laughs> awesome. Um, so the next one is integrity. Um, there's a lot of ways to accomplish a goal. And to some people, the goal is the ultimate purpose. Um, And I'll tell you right now, just like hiking, hiking is a great example of this. You know, the views from the top are amazing. They're great. But the best part is the climb is, is the part of getting there. And, uh, you'll find that the people that enjoy the climb more than, than the objective, there's never, they'll never reach a summit in their life. Um, because the minute that they get to a lookout, uh, they're ready to start the next, there's always another mountain or the, or the climb just will continue from there. Um, 
and I just think that that's super important is to just, um, honestly, if you're going to do it, you got to do it right. You know, if, if you're going to, if you're going to accomplish goal and the only way you're going to do that is by taking advantage of people or, you know, um, using less than moral, uh, compass to get there, mm. then you're, it, you're not really winning. It, it's like cheating at monopoly. How are you going to feel great at the end of that game? because you cheated in one or are you going to feel great because you won through your own accord and, and via the lessons and experiences that you've learned in the past and uh, winning with integrity is, is the only way to go. It's the only, it's the only way to live. And I just think that if you are one of those people, then you have, there's something dark that you haven't dealt with. That's motivating you to do mm-hmm. the things that you're doing, uh, which can be powerful. Uh, but at the end of the day, you're not going to feel like you won. Other people might see you in that, that sense, but inside you're never truly going to have won because you know that you didn't get there the right way. And so integrity is everything you've, you've got to have integrity. You've got to have a moral compass and it change. It's different for everybody. Just make sure that whatever it is you're doing, you're doing it along the values that you carry. Mm -hmm. I think that, uh, that that's necessary. Yeah. And I like to put it this way. And I, I can't stand people who chop other people's heads off to make themselves seem taller. And absolutely. Uh, yeah. And in, integrity, they, they say is doing the right thing, even when no one's looking. Um, yep. very, very good. What yep. else have we got? Um, so then the, the last one I kind of have on the list here is, uh, just to control your emotions. Um, that's a hard one. Emotions are very powerful and, um, they, everybody kind of responds to them differently. Everybody has different background, different upbringing. Um, everybody's more or less dealt with life in their own ways. And it, this might be a little bit, okay. I don't want to come across as, you know, sexist or anything here, but guys, I think naturally just have uh, a better, are better at controlling emotions and women are better at understanding them. Um, and that probably goes hand in hand, but I think that controlling your emotions uh, and understanding them are vital. And so, you never want to make a decision. You never want to do anything in life that is based off of, of an emotional decision because oftentimes that's not going to lead you down the right path. And a lot of times it'll screw you up. You know, you'll, you'll make decisions in life that, that could potentially, you know, make your life much more difficult just because you made that decision out of emotion. You know, is it best to, let me put it this way. I've been in a number of relationships in my life. And one of the greatest lessons that I've ever learned was actually in the relationship that I'm in now with my wife, because it's really, as far as I'm concerned, she's the only person that I've ever really truly loved. And it's taught me a lot. And one of the things that it's taught me is that everybody argues. It doesn't matter how much you love each other or or how long you've been together or how great you get along. If you only argue once a, a year, or if you find yourself arguing all the time, um, it, that does that's not really important. What's important is that when you realize that um, when you're angry with somebody, it has everything to do with you and nothing to do with them. Because that anger, you're not angry at what they di- at what they did. You're angry at how it made you feel. That's that's the emotion. That's what anger is. And so I think once you realize that, and you're like, huh, you know, I, I came to this realization that my wife, if she's arguing with me. And I get angry at that. It, it has nothing to do with her. It doesn't even matter if, if she's wrong or right. Even if I'm right in that moment, if you actually love that person, if, if you truly have that, that connection with, with someone, then you'll care more about how to just end it and, and make that situation kind of better. And so now we really never argue and we don't argue for one reason, because the moment it gets to a point where it's going in the direction of an argument either one of us will just be like, okay, you know what? You're right. I'm sorry. Even if you're not right. Okay. Even if they're not right, you're right. I'm sorry. I love you. What can I do to make the situation better? And then you just move on. And then what you realize is 90% of these arguments that you have with people, they don't, they don't fucking matter, right? They don't matter. And you realize that because a couple days later, you'll just be like, God, that was so stupid. Like, why did I get so upset? Why did we argue the way we did over that? Yeah. And it's because of emotion. So I think it just takes, you, you get to a certain point where you understand emotions, you, you become emotionally intelligent in certain areas, 
And uh, if you can learn how to control that, if you can learn how to stop yourself in the middle of, of a feeling, um, you can use that to your advantage in a lot of ways. Yeah, I like I like what Mark Twain says. He says, anger is an acid that can do more harm to the vessel in which it's stored than anything in which it's poured. Yeah, oh, my God, I love that. So, yeah, that's that's definitely a good one. And, uh, well, that's awesome, man. I can't remember. What did I say 11 was? I threw an 11 out there. Oh, boy. Doesn't, um, doesn't matter. Number 12 is punch this day in the face. Punch this <laughs> day in the face. <laughs> oh. Well, Adam, thank you so much. I think 11 much. was something like, um, remember what people told you. <laughs> yeah. So, Adam, thank you so much once again. Thanks for dropping the knowledge on us, giving some excellent sound bites. And I'm going to make a list of these and put them on the website and uh, put down a, a lot of uh, what Adam had to say about each individual, if he'll let me. And uh, hopefully people check this out and uh, go into the weekend, go into the week uh, with, with some extra knowledge dropped on them. Thank you so much, Adam, for joining us for two podcasts. Appreciate Thanks you. Thanks for coming, brother. Well, Thank you. I really appreciate it. And talking to you guys has been, uh, well, having you guys listen really, it's been, <laughs> it's been a blast. <laughs> hey, you've made our job easy and that's what we like. And, and we, we really want to have you on the show once again. So keep in touch and uh, we'd like to make you a regular. Well, I'm, I'm down. Let's do it. Awesome. Awesome. Gentlemen, it's been a wonderful evening. It's time for me to retreat uh, to the church of the comforter. If you know what I mean, that would be, <laughs> that would be my bed. And uh, I hope you all have a wonderful evening and a wonderful week. You too, man. You too, brother. See you later. All right. Good night. Have a good one, guys.